Now to talk about the science and why it's important to do this audio editing. Um, I'll be sharing some little graphics throughout this video. The first thing I want to talk about, obviously, is um, Singer's Foreman, um, but also the psychoacoustics. This is all research based on research done by um, Dr. Ian Howell, and um, he's at the New England Conservatory of Music. When we talk about Singer's Foreman, many singers, you already know this information, um, we're talking about the boost or the lining up of partials in the harmonic series. It's usually the third, fourth, and fifth between 2000 and 3500 or 4000 hertz. Um, that was a definition made by um, Sundberg in, uh, what was it, 1973 or 76. Um, and it was really assumed that it only was applicable in male voices. We've since done research and we know that female voices are capable of creating um, singer's foreman. It's really a byproduct of having an open throat. Now, new research done by Dr. Ian Howe has revealed that there is a whole bunch of harmonic information 5,000 to 12,000 hertz, particularly in high voice female singers, but male singers who sing high too, that gives us tone color. And in recordings, you might have noticed or you've heard singers say, my voice doesn't sound right in recordings. It um, doesn't sound as brilliant or it doesn't sound um, as big in recordings. And that's because the information above 4,000 hertz isn't being, I uh, use this word a lot, represented. So um, in the next part of this video, I will show you how to adjust your EQ settings, your equalizer settings in Audacity to get this buzz. I'm gonna talk about psychoacoustics and that is really our perception of sound as humans. Um, so there's three categories that we break down sound into pitch, roughness, and, um, tone color or timbre. Obviously pitch, high or low, um, roughness comes down to, um, extra noise. Like when we talk about roughness, is it a pure sound? like a pure vowel sound, or is it some sort of hiss, buzz, that sort of sound is what, what roughness is described as. And the absolute tone color, spectral tone color, I'm gonna share a graphic here um, that talks about how, because of how harmonics in the overtone series works, fundamental frequencies and partials, um, different pitches throughout the range have different tone colors. Um, this breaks down to everything C5 and below, that's treble C, has a tone color, a perceived tone color of ooh. And as you go up the scale higher than that, it becomes O oh and ah, uh, A, and eventually we arrive at E. It all is perceived by our ears and our brains as E. And this is important because when we talk about the chiaroscuro, the brightness and the darkness of the voice, it's not always perceived well in recordings. If you listen to old recordings, you don't actually get a lot of um, the, the darker sounds. And that had to do with recording technology and it was really designed around speech and was a very small frequency range. Now, um, when you record, Things. And if you use a microphone like this, which has a frequency response range of 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, all of the data is there. You just have to adjust the levels in order to get the accurate representation of the sound that, that you're making as a singer. Like I said, absolute spectral tone color will give you your original vowel sound, but because of singer's format, 
or singers formant cluster, whatever you want to call it, um, that ring, you get extra amplification. And it also has an effect on the tone color. So if, you know, if I were to sing a note around there and do it on an ah, and if I took those partials out, it would sound different. It would sound darker. It would sound partially muffled and could actually be perceived as being under pitch because you're missing that information that gives it that brightness. Um, I am going to link a video. Um, it's from Dr. Ian Howell's presentation about um, the research he did specifically in soprano singers and finding this um, spectral data. And um, I want you to watch from 14 to 18 minutes because he, he goes through this process of playing an excerpt and then taking up out those upper partials and you hear just the pure vowel and then putting them back in and how that changes the timbre of the sound and the intensity of the sound. So um, I hope that you find this information helpful and that um, we can all have better quality video and audio recording done by ourselves because not many of us have access to recording studios right now, but some of us, or you could purchase this, you know, if you don't already have some sort of recording device that is similar to this, this is $170. Um, not cheap, but not $1,000, which is what most of those recording studios have for microphones. They're spending a lot of money on those microphones in order to get the sound quality um, that is required. But this will get you really close, actually. Leave me a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful and if you have any questions. Um, I am not an expert on this, but I do have a very, very good understanding of acoustics and the basic science that goes behind it um, and why this is important for us to do. Bye.